This is the face here that the reed head's going to mount on. The reed head's going to be mounted across there, like that. This face here is not machined. It's reasonably flat, but it's not machined. So what I've done, I've made a little aluminium piece to go on there. I'll hold that on with, with two bolts, but I'll also put in four little top head jacking screws, little grub screws, so I can jack this out to get it lying level. Then the reed head will bolt onto that. We can also use the little jacking screws to get the distance right, so the reed head's under no tension. I've measured it and it's within probably 30 or 40 thou, so we can just ease that out with the jacking screws and that should allow it to line it up. So that will go onto there and this jacking screws allow me to jack it out very slightly all four ways so I can get it lying both parallel in line with this and also the right distance out so the reed head will screw straight onto that. Right, I've got it clamped in place, it's down below that face. You can see I've drilled and top two little holes over two grub screws. There'll be two more at this end, so it means we can level it up. What I need to do is put a transfer punch mark through there, then drill and top that hole five mil. And make sure I get the punch as straight as we as straight as we can. There we've got a little punch mark there. I'll get a proper centre pop and make that deeper. That's better. I can use the drilling jig again, clamp onto there to make sure that's drilled and top nice and square. I've got some tape on the drill. Which is there. I knew I had a big long 5 metre top. I don't even know where it come from, but it's going to be ideal for this particular application. Drag that. I've drilled and tapped that hole next. You can see we've got the one, two, three, four grub screws, so we can adjust that, jack it off its uneven face, and get it lying nice and torn parallel, and also at the correct distance away from here so it lines up with the reed head. This is like a, a dummy assembly. The reed head's touching the adapter plate that I put onto the lathe, the lathe carriage. All I need to do now is spot those two holes through for a couple of 4mm bolts. Right, I've marked through with a transfer punch. There's one there and one there. I want them drilling and tapping 4mm. It's a friend of mine give us a lure of this stuff. It, it's steel banding, what they use for fashioning things into crates with. 
it's the same width all the way down so they make good good thin parallels Once it's clamped in, you can, you can take them out. So I'm going to pick those two holes up there, drill them top and four mil. I've shown this before, you can get things very accurate. Line one axis up first, then the other one you can get. That's right in the centre of that pop one. This is what M4 tap and drill, I think it's 3.25. Anyway, it's the one I use all the time. It stops in the, in the tray with the four mil tops. Like I've said before, WD-40 is an excellent cutting fluid for aluminium. Right, I've got it mounted and all lined up. It all looks nice and square and true, which means that when the reed head is bolted onto it, there'll be no tension on it. It's going to pull up nice and flat against that face. We'll put it together and give it another dummy assembly and see what it's like. They're starting in the reed head is floating about and I can feel it touching on the on its back plate there. There's no undue strain or tension on it. So the reed head stops still and the scale moves. I've left sufficient room underneath there so I can get a spanner in just to tighten the carriage off well like that. That's important because you do use it all the time. There's also a hole there where you can put an iron key and you can lock the cross line as well. When I was installing the DRO, I made a bracket out of this 10mm aluminium plate and there was two drilled and tapped holes, 4mm, 4x0.7. I'd had the thing together apart that many times, the threads and the holes had become very weak. I haven't got a 4mm helicoil, uh, a 4mm helicoil kit's expensive. I was going to make another one out of steel and then what I th thought I would do, I would try and bore the back of that out and put a, an insert in with a thread in it. What I ended up doing, I used a 7mm milling cutter just to count up all that and then a 4mm nut was a really good press fit in there. I'll do this one to show you, it, it really worked well, it's a good dodge, a lot stronger than just a thread in straight aluminium. Make sure it's down. I keep saying these chucks are for, for drills, not milling cutters, but I'm going to use this milling cutter as a drill. This is the only time I use a milling cutter in a drill chuck. Right, we're just going to line it up by the eye, so we'll touch it down and we'll see it wants to go across this way slightly. That's in the centre, it's, this is where the centres are going to get. 
So we need to drill down through there. With enough depth to get a 4mm nut in. We should be something like that. Right, that's the 4mm nut. What we'll do, we'll take the cross of the vise and we'll squash that into there, or press that into there, and that'll be a permanent repair. It'll be a lot stronger, probably stronger than using a helicoil. When I found this morning, you just lie it on top of the hole and give it a gentle, a gentle start with a hammer, just to stop it falling out. And then simply squash it in in the vent. That really goes in nice. So that's what nut pressed in there. That's what it actually looks like. Quite a nice job. You can see it's it's got a good hole in there. What I'll do, I'll put a bolt in the back of it, and we'll show. How strong it actually is. Right, that's the, the four mil bolt screwing down through into the into the nut. Now it's not going to strip in a hurry. It's going to break the Allen key. There's no way that a, a thread in the aluminium will be anywhere near as strong as that. It even looks like a nice repair. This could be done with six. 8mm nuts as well. I think anything else I make out of aluminium like that, I'll use that method. Anyway, a nice simple free method of repairing a stripped small hole in aluminium. I've anchored both the cables onto the bracket for the bottom reed head. Made a nice strong anchor so they can't move. I've also anchored them onto the splash back. That means they're held up away from any debris and swath that's going to be down there. There's enough slack in them so I can move the full, the full travel of the carriage, and they're still nice and slack. There's an aluminium splash rod that goes onto there. Just held on with two screws. It's down below the level of that so I can still rotate the compound slide. All I need to do is notch a little bit out of there so I can get my spanner in to get to the carriage, to get to the carriage lock bolt. Just going to use a manual milling machine to take that down. It's called a bastard file. Spaces in the back of there to hold it so I didn't, didn't damage it. It's only nice little stainless steel counter sunk screws that come with it. These are pre drilled, these holes, pre drilled and tapped. It pinches it off quite nicely. It does offer quite a bit of protection as well. One thing I will have to do, it is possible to slide the tail stack up and that will bang into the into the scale. So to prevent that from happening, I'll simply drill and tap a hole in there and put probably a 12mm cap head in there so it hits on the bottom of the carriage. That hits the carriage before damages a, a scale. If you don't do that straight away it'll be one of them jobs oh, I'll do it and then you never do it and you end up banging your tailstock into that scale or the reed head and it won't do it any good at all. I mean the stuff's guaranteed for two years but not guaranteed against being whacked with that. Put the aluminium cover 
back on it here. I still may make a new cover so I can put a mountain on the, on the end of here as well. But I'll make it out of steel, then I can put a clock gauge onto there. At the minute, that's a, basically a flat, a flat surface, but it's useless because it's aluminium. There's one modification I did do underneath here, which is quite important. I have sacrificed a little bit of cross slide travel. So what I've done, I put a stop on the end of here. And the cross sides, the tool pour is still way past the left centre. I would never use any more travel anyway. The reed head is coming very near the end of the scale. I could probably get another half an inch out of it, but basically that's more than enough. There was a spare tap tool there, so I've just built a bit of quarter stainless plate onto it and welded a little tag on the top. That's a stop there.